Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last time we upgraded our blood magic setups and added 20 more alchemy tables to handle all of the catalyst production that we need. And it also seems that between episodes, our life essence network is back in a more healthy position. We also set up a second bewitchment area to handle our distilleries. And most importantly, we crafted the Watch of Flow and Time. So yeah, we finished off last episode trying to craft the Neutronium Compressor. And we're still missing our Celestial Crystal Cores and the Chaotic Cores for this. So to request 4 more of these crystal cores, we have mostly everything actually for the craft. However, we are out of arsenic sulphide. And this sulphide you can get from rainbow tablets, which are most easily obtained actually from Mars. So all of these waypoints actually is <laughs> these dungeon structures that I've looted. Look at all of these things. Pretty much every episode I'm here uh, collecting rainbow tablets. But rather than collecting these things manually from the shulker boxes, I think there's a total of 12 in each structure. Oh yeah, we got 4 rainbow tablets from that one. Rather than flying through there manually, let's set up an automated system to collect these for us. And I think that the best tool for this job is the digital miner again. So there is, I think, three different variants of the shulker box that can spawn in there. The orange, the brown and the red. So we added those into the config of the digital miner. And we can easily get all of the loot from this area like this. However, it's not really much use to us sitting in the shulker boxes. And opening, placing down and opening these one by one to collect the loot is... Not really any different to go and loot the dungeons themselves. So I've set us up a system to effectively unload these shulker boxes. Hello zombie. So this is just a block placer and a block breaker. And I've set it up as a subnet for the storage. So the idea is that we're going to have an ender pouch when we go loot Mars. Which will connect to this ender chest. Place all the shulkers inside the block placer. And when they're broken by the breaker, as you can see, they do actually drop their contents. So all we need now is a collection system and then to store them in this terminal. So I think for this, we can just use a ranged collector. We don't need a whitelist on this one. And then we have item conduit coming out of this and into this interface here, which is on the subnet. So this line here is from our main network. We're powering it through this quartz fiber and we have a storage bus to read the contents so that we can access the contents of the subnet from our wireless terminal here. So now when we go to loot Mars, we can access our ender pouch, toss in the shulker boxes. We should probably take our magnet off while we're here. But yeah, they all get placed, broken and stored in this terminal. And then I guess we also have to deal with the empty shulker boxes. I think we're just going to honestly just trash these things. Yeah, so I just added a little trash can just below this breaker and filtered it for the three different colours of shulkers. So all that's left to do now is just to go on a little Mars expedition. Hopefully much quicker than all of the other expeditions we've been on. Oh yeah, look at all those items. <laughs> so from only a few few minutes of loot in Mars, we already have 77 rainbow tablets. And in fact, I'm actually going to remove the recipe for rainbow tablets. We obviously do have the ability to create these from scratch. However, it's much more time efficient and resource efficient to just loot them from Mars. And also, I think we actually need the chemical dissolver recipe for the rainbow tablet. And we have also run out of space in these interfaces, which means we can just add three more on top here. And add in the rainbow tablet recipes here. Now we can request the four crystal cores. Nice. Although these are one of the biggest crafts we have actually have in our system. Yeah, 500 star leather. I think actually we're going to passive that. Let's actually have a look here to see what other bottlenecks we have. Yeah, these infusers are definitely one of them. And the star leather is also used in crystal teen, which we are still manually crafting here on the elite crafting table. But I think that's also something we have to look at. So yeah, there's going to be lots of crafting like this going forward. And it's just all about optimizing from here on out, I think. At least for most of the stuff. Oh, and look at this. Look how quickly it crafts after it charges. <laughs> the charging we can't speed up because of power transfer, but I mean, this is already really quick, to be honest. So yeah, there is our four crystal cores. We still have four more chaotic cores, actually, to order for this. But yeah, before we request those things, let's passive star leather and aquamarine. So to do that, I think we could just have two level emitters here. And inside the interface, we can ask for sparkling aquamarine, which is what we infuse for the resonating gems, and also magical leather. Then we can run some item conduit between the mechanical user and the interface. Set these to active with a signal. And we'll put limited item filters on the insert, just so that it doesn't fill the user's slots with all of the same item. 
It's quite unlikely that's going to happen with the crafting speed, but uh, just to be safe. And then we have to set our buffers. I think we're going to start off at 1024 resonating gems. This may be too low, I'm not actually sure. Let's start with that number though. And we'll invert the level emitter so that it emits when we're below that amount. That automatically sends it to the user, which places it on the infuser. And the other one activates it with the resonating wand, starting the craft. And then we already had the range collector to pick up the outputs. And we can just do the same for the magical leather. Or the star leather, rather. I think we'll set this a bit lower though, maybe 512 for now. There, and it's going to alternate between them, since we have this on random slot. But once the buffers fill up, that should stop. And the idea is that once we request the items, we already have them available, so that we're not waiting on this specific step. And since we set that up, actually, let's also increase the buffer on Magical Leather. We may actually have to add a second Crucible for this. In any event, let's also just increase the buffer on this. Maybe even to 2000, yeah, let's just do 2500. Alright, so while those things are crafting, we should think about what our next steps is going to be. What the next major goal of this pack is. And obviously we are getting close to the end, but... Actually, I was, <laughs> I was having a bit of a look through here. We were actually not as close as I first thought. So we did open up this creative chapter last episode. And I think that we should try to work towards the Neutron Collector. So this journey may take us a few episodes actually to get. It's going to require us to make a creative mill, which we do actually get four of for this craft. However, for this we need the Creative Dank Null. And for this we need Essence of Enlargement, the Tier 6 Dank Null, which is easy by now actually, the Creative Book Chest, which uh, <laughs> is definitely an interesting recipe. And two creative storage upgrades, which requires two creative modifiers each, plus an energy condenser mark two, which takes two energy condenser mark ones, which take two alchemical chests. So <laughs> things, uh, if they weren't already crazy enough, then uh, yeah. But anyways, one step at a time, our last chaotic core has just finished crafting, which completes our recipe for the neutronium compressor. Actually, do we want to craft? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> let's do this. So this was a quest actually in chapter 28 here. We get 16 chaotic cores, which is going to help us tremendously going forward. This unlocks a brand new singularity. Well, actually several singularities we have to make with this. And also the antimatter cluster, which is 100 of this anti-hydrogen we created last episode with the electrons and the protons. Most of the neutronium compressor recipes are actually only 100 or 200. Well, it looks like the door is 1,000, but I mean, I mean it's oak doors, so... <laughs> but yeah, you may have recognised this antimatter cluster as one of the components of the Neutron Collector. But before we use this compressor, let's go back and uh, have a look at the Creative Dank Null, which is this quest here. That leads into the mill and then the Neutronium Compressor. And once we have Neutronium, we can create seeds for this. And Neutronium is a very late game item, which is used in a lot of these creative crafts, actually. So starting from the top, we need Corruption Cores. Yeah, these things we've been able to craft for a couple of episodes. It takes Chaotic Cores, but we just got some for Quest Rewards. Corrupted Draconium we made from the Philosopher's Stone from Awakened Draconium. And we also need 8 Death Cores for this. So we're going to put in a crafting recipe for these Corruption Cores. And I'm assuming we'll run into some bottlenecks trying to create these. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, let's start at the top. These Elemental Soils here. I was going to say we can just increase the buffer, but I set this up in such a way that it's using integrated dynamics. And I think we have to reprogram this. Hold on, let me fix this. Okay, that should fix them all. I changed them all from a stack size of 64 up to 1024 stacks of each. So yeah, all the items in the drawer are now climbing. It might take a while for elemental soil automation to catch up to this. Yeah, this thing is, is started. This thing has been off for quite a while, actually. Anyways, bottleneck number two is potions of haste. That's an easy fix. Next bottleneck is the ebb of death. Let's increase the drawer limit for this one. Also liquid witchcraft, cloudy oil. Actually, no, cloudy oil, no. <laughs> Wait a sec. Essence of vitality, this is the one we want. One of the other ones is Florbs of Liquid Death, which we do already have set up, but uh, we're going to modify it just slightly. So I believe we looked at this last episode, but this is, we've got this set up over here to automatically import the buckets of Liquid Death. But on the recipe for this thing, instead of the output being a Liquid Death bucket, since they all go into the fluid transposer anyway, we are just going to upset the output as the Florbs of Liquid Death, so that the AE system knows how to craft these things. Alright, and we've also got quite a big uh, issue here with our mana items. These mana items we can just increase the buffers for. And in fact, I noticed here that we can actually get the Hyper Diamonds from EMC, which is what we use for the conversion. Let's get a bunch of those in our system, which will be converted into the mana diamonds for us. And other than Magical Leather, which I still haven't decided what we're going to do about, actually. Oh, we have to also increase Aquasalus. But there is also Iron Mechanical Components. Oh, and we've actually got this set up here, although it looks like we're only buffering one item. Hmm. Yeah, this redstone control isn't going to work like this. Let's change this to a level emitter. 
Yeah, a simple level emitter set to 5,000 iron mechanical components. When we're above, the engineer's workbench will turn itself off. Yeah, I think we will actually have to add a second crucible here. This magical leather is not fast enough, <laughs> just with one. This positioning is not exactly ideal, <laughs> but I think it's the best spot for it, to be honest. So we'll need another emptying Essentia transfuser, and also to hook up the inputs and outputs for this as well. Yeah, so I got this hooked up to the same controls as the first one here. It outputs to this chest and then into the storage drawer. And the inputs are from the top here into the hopper, except now the interface will round robin between both of the crucibles. This does also mean that we'll have to increase our rate of blood infused leather, which is the tier below which goes inside the crucible. The rate of industrial leather should be fast enough, but we definitely have to add some more blood infusers for this step. And I guess we can also make up some more promises of velocity, which are not in this one for the blood infused leather. I think actually the upgrades make all the difference here, so I repurposed this bottom left one, which used to be for our on-demand crafts which we used to mainly actually use for clean runic plates, which was part of the recipe for purified tablets, and this was made all the way into the rainbow tablets. But since we're no longer creating those anymore, I think it's fine to add this blood infuser for industrial, keep two more for on demand, and I've also put in promises of velocity. All right, we're at a point where we can request one of these corruption cores. A lot of buffers are still filling up, but we only need two for the quest, so... <laughs> yeah, once we have two of these things for the quest, we should look at this creative bookshelf, which I guess will be our first creative item, technically. So we need some dungeon bookshelves. I'm sure we should have some of these. Yeah, we have 56. Is that going to be enough for us? We need 10 per bookcase, and we need two bookcases per dank null. It's going to be enough for now, but I think we do actually need more of these things eventually. Yeah, they're used in the creative chest recipe. Okay, <laughs> that's for later though. Other than that, we need the recipe for the oak bookcase, and also four of the taste of rainbow which takes rainbow slates. I think, I hope we have these because these take a long time to craft. A rainbow stone we have and rainbow tablets. Oh yeah, we have 1400 rainbow slates backlogged. And we can start laying out the recipe while our cores are crafting. Oh wait a second, we, had, we actually need this table for the uh, corrupted cores. I think we may have to do something about this hellfire forge as well. Although it's nothing that the, <laughs> the watch of flowing time can't fix. Look at this thing. And while we're here, let's just uh, once again upgrade the buffers on all of these reagents. And it looks like we've also got a bucket issue here. More specifically, an iron plate issue, which is max upgraded. So I think our only option is to add another compactor to this. So we're going to swap out the ludicrous ore one, which we no longer use. Give this some upgrades. And hope it's going to be sufficient. <laughs> oh, there's so many bottlenecks creeping up nowadays. And we have also run into a pulsating iron issue. So let's get these seeds leveled. And even with the changes we added to Thomcraft last episode, it looks like the Precantatio cannot keep up with all this this magical leather we just added. So to fix the Precantatio, I've changed this actually quite a bit. I added two slurry pumps to the Void Metal Essentia Smellery. And the slurry pumps just allow the secondary outputs to be output to here. Although it can also be the Precantatio that ends up in these ones. So I added two more import buses filtered for precantatio which will send the essentia into the subnet and then into the jar and off to where it needs to go and i'm not entirely sure if this three jar for each thing is necessary but i just separated out all of the alembics except this one here this should be separated and added three buffers on top since we're dealing with two outputs that we want to void and i'm finding that when our buffers are all empty life essence is still an issue for us so <laughs> we're gonna have to address this somehow Alright, so I've more or less completely reworked all three of our blood altars here. I took out all of the runes that were on all three of these things and basically started afresh, well giving myself nausea for like four minutes straight. But this first altar here was only tier five before, so we took this up to tier six, giving us extra capacity for our runes. So we have the full 19 acceleration runes, I think, on all three of these altars. So in this first one, we mostly have runes of sacrifice and some displacement runes. 
which pretty much gives the full buffer of the blood alert every tick. And then over on this one, I've added more runes of the orb for capacity. This one, we're pretty much jamming in as much life essence as we can to this blood orb, while staying net positive on our total LP gain. But yeah, as you may have noticed, I also added this environment controller. And this is so that we can watch of the flow in time this Master Ritual Stone, which will damage the mobs at a faster rate and give us more LP. However, the environment controller is actually for regen 3, otherwise I think the mobs would die inside there. But yeah, like this, we have no issue with LP gain anymore. To make this thing, it did mean crafting up some regeneration 4 potions, which I thought we were actually creating, but uh, it turns out we actually weren't. Yeah, other than that, really not too expensive to get that thing up and running. But on another positive note, that did kill enough time for us to get our corruption cores, or the materials for the corruption cores, which should be our second quest of the day. And the first quest in chapter 29 for us, which opens up the bookshelf quest, which we can actually create. Let's make our first two creative items. Not very exciting, but <laughs> it's a start. And from here, we pretty much have two options. We can either work on the Essence of Enlargement, which is insanely expensive <laughs> because of this uh, core stabilizer. I mean, uh, we're going to need a lot of these things, to be honest. Or we could head up to the top half of this quest tree and pick up Protactium. I swear this is the one of the last times you'll have to do this. <laughs> I don't believe this quest book. Okay, how do we get this one? From White Matter? Alright, let's pick up some White Matter for this. Oh, we can only get two. Yeah, we do have to also look at a way of Automate and EMC. But for now, we're just going to keep manually throwing Void Metal in there. Which is fine for now, but I mean, each piece of White Matter only gives us four Protactium. Or Protactinium, actually. It's got an extra few letters in there. But we need 16 per ingot. And then we need some number of ing 8 ingots per creative modifier, and we need 2 of these per storage upgrade. But we can at least get enough for 1 ingot and unlock our quest. And this unlocks our creative modifier. Actually, you know what, on second thought, this is actually a lot of protactinium that we need. Actually change gears, I've changed my mind. <laughs> We're gonna try to get this alchemical chest. And we need, uh, I think, 8 of these things. Oh, it's 8 just for the dank null. And then we need more on top of that for like the creative component pouch which we need four of for, for the creative chest, which really does mean that we have to address our uh, draconium issue. Yeah, like all of these take corrupted cores, and this is a lot of chaotic cores. And chaotic cores means awakened cores, means wyvern cores, means like six times the draconic core cost. <laughs> so let's try to passive as much of this as we possibly can. Starting, I think, with the solar ingots. So one of the most time-consuming parts of creating a solar ingot is actually the solar array panel. And inside this recipe, we have the Solar Array Wafer, which takes rainbow tablets. However, this we can loot from Mars. So I don't think we're going to worry about this one specifically. The compressed tin we get from our multi-block. This is also pretty quick the way we have it. Although the photovoltaic cells do take quite a bit of time when we're crafting draconic cores. So I think this is something we should passive. It may not make a big difference in the grand scheme of things, but every little helps, right? <laughs> so it definitely can't hurt to do this, I don't think. Where are we going to place this though? You know what, I think we'll actually put it over on this side of the base. We need some crafters as well as a few other machines. So we're first going to start off with a crusher into an alloy smeller. Power cell for power. We are going to filter the crusher for ender pearls, and we will limit that item filter on a different side, unfortunately, with these mechanism machines, where we have to combine with energized dark ingots and photovoltaic composite. Nice, so this is going to give us our photovoltaic plates, which we then send up to this crafter here, where I've filtered in all the items for daylight sensors, the simple photovoltaic cell, and then I guess the energized version. And as part of this, we also have to passive fused quartz here just from blocks of quartz, which I thought we were making, but apparently not. <laughs> and we also have a saw in factory here for sticks, as our stick production was apparently zero before. Well, probably not zero. I think we're making them somewhere. It's just not fast enough. So <laughs> we do also get a sawdust byproduct from this saw in factory, which we're just putting in a drawer with a void upgrade on here. And then we just have several item interfaces back here to supply the items. There is a drawer controller under here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there it is there. That one has a storage bus on it. And while I was doing that, actually, I realized one more thing we can actually passive now is galactic ingots, since we now have resonating gems on passive. And of course, we have star metal seeds for these as well. So that should just be as simple as adding those items to this interface, setting the extract on the conduit, and filtering into the crafter. Although, instead of the output going back into the interface here, we want to disable this one. I think we'll just store them in a drawer to control the output. In fact, we may as well connect it to this Perfectium one. 
Yeah, so I had to fiddle with some of the channels underneath here. I don't really want to show you that because <laughs> it's a little bit spaghetti under there if I'm honest. But we got the channels for this and I think a full drawer of Galactic ingots will be just fine. So one of the other parts of this alchemical chest is this 16,384k ME storage component. Which isn't really expensive for us at this point, it's just a lot of... Where is this thing? Pure Certus Quartz, yeah. So I don't know if I've shown this or not, but I did actually passive Pure Certus Quartz. Uh, maybe it was last episode even, and we're up to 106,000. I can't remember exactly what we used to create here before, but this is an advanced enriching factory to make our Certus Quartz seeds into Pure Certus. And the seeds we're making over here in this crafter. So yeah, I think at this point we can request these. And other than the huge conductive iron cost, which I did increase the buffer for, uh, we have seeds for these things, so... Yeah, let's get a couple of these crafted. And so the Corrupted Draconium is basically free at this point. Oh, we need a, another Celestial Crystal Core for this. But um, these reactor stabilizers. So I put in... Oh yeah, this is another two Chaotic Cores for these. Plus one more for this Corrupted Dragon token. Plus one more for the Reactor Focus Ring. Plus one more for the Stabilizer Rotor Assembly. Plus two more for the Stabilizer Frame. So that's five Chaotic Cores per Stabilizer. And there's four Stabilizers per chest. Let's just try to request one of these and just... Let our applied energistic system tell us what we need. So we did get two from a quest reward a while ago. Oh yeah, a million and a half bytes. Over a million and a half. And we're missing barium sulfate from this. But the barium sulfate we can get from crystal teen ingots. So I did mention at the start of this episode we should automate this. So let's see about doing that at the moment. And the only option for doing this in this pack is the automation interface. Which is extremely slow actually. But at this point it's not too bad to craft I don't think. Oh, wait a second. Ambient thermal controllers takes motors, which takes the tier 1 rocket engine, and this is an induction provider at ultimate tier. <laughs> I don't know if we've got enough wires for this, to be honest. Oh, actually, we do loot these ambient thermal controllers from Mars, but I am a bit surprised to see lunar reactive dust missing. That's not a good sign. <laughs> it's also not the first time that's happened, which we create over here. We're missing the inputs from this, which is Osglo Lapis, and this just isn't getting enough items. And neither is our Osgo glass here, it looks like. I think it may be because I upgraded some of these machines, and therefore our item inputs in the back here are no longer sufficient. Yeah, I'm going to take some... Let me see what I can do about this. Okay, it took a little bit, but I think we're up and running again. I upgraded some of the capacitors in the Osgo lapis, so hopefully this should catch back up. Oh yeah, we're already up to four stacks. I'm curious how long that was off for. I feel like all I've done today is put out fires. <laughs> Okay, all the buffers have filled up. This is our automation interface crafting, which I was thinking we could actually put down here next to our compressors. This probably means we should craft another elite crafting table, and we'll have one just dedicated for Crystal Team. Here we are, our first automation interface should also be a quest. Alright, so to automate this table, I think we have to save the recipe in here, which means we first have to put it inside the elite crafter. Save the recipe. Crystal Team alloy, okay. I think we also want auto extract on and auto insert on from up and this allows us to put an interface on top of this and hook this up to some channels which should just be above here. We also need to power the automation interface so for that we can use an entangle porter and then I think all we have to do now is put in the recipe for this and can we request crystal team? Is this going to work? Oh this is actually a lot faster than I remember this being. Yeah look at this, no more manual crafting. <laughs> nice. And in fact, I bet the watch of flow and time would help down there as well. I mean, not that this is going to be our bottleneck anymore. So now that we have crystal teen automated, we can go back to what we were originally doing, which is to automate the barium sulfate, which we need for all of our reactor stabilizers here. And on the plus side, we also did automate the components for this today, which was the star leather. We still have to automate the plasma cores. We have these on request. But I was thinking actually we may add another laser focus for this. I'm still undecided about that though. But let's put in the recipe for our barium sulfate. And it looks like the huge storage component is just finished. I don't know if this is a quest for us or not. But let's see how far away we are now from this reactor stabilizer. I have a feeling we're not going to get this, to be honest. <laughs> uh, no crafting CPUs? Hmm, should we use this one as a crafting CPU? This crafting storage? I think instead we're actually just going to add some more 4096Ks. I think the highest we have right now is 1024. But I think between episodes I'm going to significantly beef up our applied energistics crafting. And yeah, I did already add acceleration cards to a lot of these molecular assemblers for this craft. Which does significantly speed this up to be fair. And it's always awesome to go in and see a crafting screen that looks like this. 
But yeah, you know what? I think with that, we're going to end the episode here. We do still need another two Celestial Crystal Cores for this. And it's going to take four Reactor Stabilizers. So uh, yeah, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we're going to get this today. I'm going to try to get these crafted between episodes, or at least a lot of the components crafted. I am pleased to say that our Life Essence Network is actually <laughs> in a decent spot. It was uh, pretty slow progress today, but we did technically get our first creative item. But anyways, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Divine Journey 2.